Uh, welcome, dear friends, to our final uh, Truth and Justice Vigil uh, session. And uh, seeing many familiar faces here, so, so glad you could be with us again. And I am so happy to introduce uh, someone that I hold in very high regard. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet her and practice with her. Um, in 2019, there was a gathering for African descended uh, Dharma teachers, Buddhist Dharma teachers, and Camila Mashid was um, there chanting her heart out and bringing her fierce uh, clarity and wisdom. I'm not going to read you her bio because you can read that yourself on the Common Ground website. Um, but one of the things that I will say that I have very much appreciated about her is um, this trust and confidence in her voice um, that she carries, that this truth must be spoken, um, and she has done so on many platforms. She is um, a prolific writer. She uh, um, participated in the Black and Buddhist Summit. Um, and continues to partner with teachers, including Ruth King and Ayo Yasunde, and just all over the place um, in academia and Buddhist circles. I just, I just can't say how much uh, I adore her and respect the the work that she is doing. And I'm so pleased that you, uh, Camila, have made time to join us here today. My pleasure, and thank you, Stacey, for that really warm uh, welcome and invitation, and yeah, just for the opportunity to join you in this really um, vital space that you've built and co-created, um, and thank you to all of you for letting me uh, keep vigil and support vigil with you today and for your vigilance. Um, throughout the period that these have been taking place and before it and beyond it, uh, that the, yeah, the thought that occurs to me is that, you know, what that word means, that uh, notion of, of vigil, right? That it means keeping watch and wakefulness and that we are getting to touch into our own um, lives by being awake to what's happening in the lives of those with whom we are interdependent. So um, deep respect to you for the work that you're doing and this commitment to wakefulness that um, you've embodied in this time. So I thought we could start with a, a brief landing and uh, kind of arrival practice. We are all, I'm sure, coming from things and we have things on the horizon to go to uh, after our time is uh, wrapped up for this session, but to just allow our bodies and minds and hearts and spirits to be fully here. If you feel comfortable or like to drop your gaze or turn your gaze inward by closing your eyes, just to observe what's happening in your interior life, feel free. Just allow yourself to take a nice, deep, diaphragmatic breath. And let the breath help you notice your body in this moment, in this place. A long inhalation, allowing your breath to guide your attention to any places in your body you might want to shift, elongate, loosen. That the breath itself is in and of freedom. So let it guide you to freedom in your body.
noticing your feet or whatever part of your body making contact with the ground. Maybe wriggling your toes, noticing yourself in relationship to the ground. Notice that you're held. Your body is held, our bodies are held. All bodies, the living, the transitioned are held by this earth. Leaning into this collective holding that the earth is providing for us and that the universe itself is maintaining. making contact with this common human ground. This common ground we share with all forms of life. Living, transitioned, nascent. Breathing in. I'm aware of this body and its freedom. Breathing out, landing this body, allowing it to be supported by the earth. And as we stay with the awareness of the body, notice our connection to the earth. Allowing our bodies to arrive. We breathe in welcome to our bodies. Noticing the presence of all other bodies sustained in the earth. We welcome them. In grateful awareness of our bodies, We offer grateful watchfulness for all bodies. May this body of mine be free and cared for. May all bodies be free and cared for. May black and brown bodies be free and cared for. Breathing in that attention, intention. And breathing out. Awareness, attention. Breathing in awareness and breathing out intention. May black bodies be free. May brown bodies be free. Allowing our attention to float to the mind and notice the mind, glance at the mind. Not grabbing thoughts, not pushing them away, just noticing there's a mind. Welcome mind. 
my mind is welcome here. Noticing the vast fields of minds in this space and beyond it. Welcome, all minds. Your mind is welcome here. I welcome your mind. Breathing in awareness of black minds, brown minds, and bodies. Black minds and brown minds. And the worry and the grief held in those minds, in the minds of black and brown people. Let those minds be in our awareness. And breathe out metta, loving kindness, compassion. Feeling black minds around us with metta. with awareness of the minds of those who would do harm. We allow those minds to be in our awareness and offer those minds wisdom. Offer those minds pause. Offer those minds insight into interdependence. And with awareness of our feelings, our emotions, our hearts, we can breathe in, maybe touching the heart chakra and welcome, welcome our hearts here. My heart is welcome. All the range of feelings, all welcome. And then breathing out, welcome to other hearts, all hearts, all those feelings that all people are experiencing. Breathing out loving kindness to the vast human hearts, the suffering hearts, the hopeful hearts, the fearful hearts. Breathe in the awareness of all those capacities in our own heart and breathe out compassion and loving kindness for all hearts. Letting our awareness take in the brokenhearted, black and brown people suffering violence and the threat of violence in every moment. The hurting hearts of young people, children, adults, older people. Let our awareness be, our watchfulness be present with those hearts and send loving kindness and compassion to the hearts of black and brown people. With gratitude for their generosity of spirit
and commitment to being allies. Welcome and compassion for the hearts of black and brown people. For all those grieving hearts, for all of our grieving hearts, we offer compassion and we reach into the pain for wisdom and insight. And allowing that part of ourselves that's unnameable, ineffable, what we sometimes call spirit, the energetic field of our lives, to notice and connect with the energetic field of the lives of all others be buoyed by that, sending compassion, maybe opening your fingers like you're a conduit and allowing compassion to flow through you like electricity to the energetic field of all beings. My spirit is welcome here. I send energy, vitality, and compassion to the spirits of all others. I send the energy of vitality, compassion, and wisdom. The energy of loving kindness to the spirit of black and brown people, living, transcended, waiting to be born. I transmit from my own energetic field. loving kindness to all life. Loving kindness to black and brown people. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to practice with you. And I thought, since this is my first time joining you, that I'd actually like to end our last vigil, that I'd like to listen to each of you for a moment, maybe take between 30 and 60 seconds each and just share what arises for you? If you want to reflect on what the vigil has been in your life, feel free or just notice what's arising today. Anyone can start. I think that leaves me. <laughs> uh, it's very sweet and uh, just heartwarming to hear all of your gratitude for the space. Um, I've been here every Tuesday since April when we started gathering um, and the impetus was the trial for Derek Chauvin who was subsequently uh, convicted for the murder of George Floyd and um, we had a large engaged passionate group in April and May, while the trial was going and we were awaiting the verdict, and then a smaller group as we awaited the sentencing, and then a much smaller and core group after the sentencing. And I think that reflects what 
has been shared here tonight also, right? When there's not this external threat fire that we can turn back toward comfort. And I just have a lot of appreciation, gratitude and respect for all of you for staying right here, right where you are, being challenged and questioning how to continue showing up when there isn't an, an immediate and obvious threat or fire. I assure you, there are Black people being harmed this very moment. The trial for the three men involved in the murder of Ahmad Aubrey is soon to begin. It's the same narrative that we heard defending Derek Chauvin, uh, the same narrative that we read in my grandmother's hands, the threat of the black body, the justification of the, the harm against the black body. And I've appreciated getting to know each of you and hearing you as you find ways to show up in your own life with your voice. Right? Not all of us are going to be marching in the streets. Not all of us are going to be writing letters. But all of us are engaged in some way with someone where we can engage in a conversation. Right? So I've, I've appreciated your endurance and have a bit more hope and faith that this indeed is the way of transforming the world that we live in, one person at a time, one Tuesday at a time. <laughs> Um, and it's been, it's made me so happy to uh, introduce you to many people that I call friends, these Black Buddhist teachers who are doing the damn thing out there <laughs> without a lot of the um, recognition and acknowledgement that many white Buddhist teachers get. So I hope that you will continue to follow the teachers that you've been introduced to and, or at least be interested in different Dharma voices. So much gratitude, much gratitude. And just rest and bask in that in that deep gratitude that we all feel for the beautiful space that's been created here. And allow that gratitude to buoy us, to resource us in our ongoing commitment to wakefulness and vigilance. Speaking about Zoom and the opportunities it provides, one of the ways, because I also teach, I teach in lots of formats online, online, online. And one of the things I often do when I'm leading a session is uh, what's called the 202020 uh, break, where I encourage everyone to look away from the screen uh, every 20 minutes, looking at least 20 feet away for at least 20 seconds. The Op American Opticians Association found that that's good practice for uh, computer engagement anyway, because our eyes get in this constricted position when looking at screens and looking 20 feet away allows them to expand to their, you know, the ocular muscles to expand to their full um, breadth and width. And um, certainly, you know, allows our necks and the rest of us to stretch a little bit as well. So my thought is that we could um, take a little longer um, than 20 seconds, maybe a full minute uh, to look away from our screens. And while we do that, I'd like to offer a chanting practice. Um, 
you know, as a, a way to stay connected in our field together. If you need to, you know, stretch or whatever, of course, do all of that. Feel free to go off camera if you want or stay on camera. But I'm going to chant for about one minute. And what I'm going to be chanting is Nam Myoho Renge Kill. I'll actually drop, drop it in the chat in case you want to chant along. Um, and it, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo is both the title and the essence of the Lotus Sutra. And the reason that it's so uh, central to a lot of Buddhist practitioners, the Lotus Sutra is central because it's the sutra that talks about this transformation of suffering into wisdom right? You've all heard the expression, no mud, no lotus, right? That it is through the sufferings that we engage and transmute that we manifest our enlightenment. And certainly the dukkha, the suffering of racism um, is that, um, provides that opportunity as well for us to wake up in a particular kind of way, wake up our compassion, wake up our courage, wake up our insight, and to wake up our ability to act in the world. Um, and so I'll offer this uh, chanting practice for 60 seconds and do with it what, what you will. Feel free to chant along or just, just look away 20 feet and rest your eyes as you stretch. Nam myo ho ren ge kyo Nam myo ho ren ge kyo Nam myo ho ren ge kyo Offering prayers and commitment to the safety of black and brown people in the US, in Haiti, at all the so-called borders and all over the world. Nam myo ho renge kyo, nam myo ho renge kyo, Nam myo ho ren ge kyo, nam myo ho ren. Nam myo ho ren ge kyo, nam myo ho ren ge kyo, nam myo ho ren ge kyo. Nam myo ho ren ge kyo, nam myo ho ren ge kyo, nam myo ho ren ge kyo. Nam myo ho ren ge kyo. Thank you. You, you muted yourself, Camille. I hope there that was, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that was a good little resonance for you all and a little stretch for your eyes and bodies as well. What I thought I'd offer um, as a kind of final um, opportunity to engage today is uh, an, an, an opportunity for us to set our intention around how we will stay awake. Like, what is that going to look like, right? That we have had this, we've been graced and are filled with gratitude for the space being created and held for us. And we can think of that as kind of an incubator of our own uh, capacities, right? And so having had our capacities held and incubated by this beautiful space that Stacy and Io have created, how will we use the growth that we have developed here to maintain our vigilance, to interrupt that pull to retreat into uh, not knowing and not engaging. So I think if we set intentions, what will we do to remind ourselves, right? And there's lots of things we can do. We can, uh, you know, create uh, intentional communities that support one another, even if it's just a kind of accountability partnership with someone here to say, I wanna stay awake 
I know you want to stay awake and engaged. How about we practice once together, once a week together to stay awake and engaged and check in? I, I don't want to prescribe it for you. I just want to kind of create a space for you to do some reflection about how you will continue to grow awareness, insight, caring, and a platform for action in the world, right? Like Anne was talking about, you know, like to, to create some kind of practice that allows you to stay awake and launch you into meaningful engagement in the world, launch you into saying the words black and brown bodies. So people hear those words, care for black and brown bodies. What's happening to black and brown bodies? Like that you be the ones who say those words. So I've said enough because I don't want to prescribe it for you, but I, I want to um, create some background for you to set that intention and if you, if it's useful for you to use this as kind of a contemplative writing exercise, um, where you maybe journal a little bit about it, that's fine, or make a note on your phone or computer. I'm going to play some music uh, because music allows for us to enter a contemplative space sometimes. And this particular song that I'm going to play for you is called Prema. And Prema is Sanskrit for divine love. Right, so Alice Coltrane is performing this song Prema live. So we get to just hear and be with her embodied um, articulation of divine love and let that be the space from which we launch our intentions that we awaken to our intention. We write down our intention and consider what actions could, could uh, could be spawned from that intention, right? So you're gonna write your intention, you're gonna write what actions could be spawned from it so that you have that as your next step held in the divine love that Alice Coltrane is going to embody for us now. Thank you. Thank you for uh, joining me and Alice Coltrane's time with Life Force and offering of Prema, divine love uh, to all of us as we set our intentions um, and our commitments to uh, active uh, insight. And I thought that perhaps um, we could close with anyone who wants to, uh, sharing what arose for you as an intention um, or a next kind of action step, how you will move your ongoing effort for insight and action based on the insight of the need to be really uh, awake and involved in the protection of black and brown bodies. How will that go forward for you? Feel free to, you know, uh, say just one sentence. Um, I know we end at 5.30, so unless you want to stay till not, well, 5.30 Pacific, unless you want to stay until <laughs> the end of time, <laughs> feel free to just share one sentence of your intention. I'm sure you have made big plans during that 10 minute uh, holding that Alice Coltrane offered us, but maybe just share one of your plans. Anyone can start. Yeah, and, and for anyone who doesn't know, the Sankofa bird is uh, actually, it's on my logo, so I can show it to you. It's symbolic because uh, this bird looks back um, as it flies forward. This is the Sankofa bird supported by the lotus uh, blossom. But the Sankofa bird is, is symbolic because it, it shows how, you know, by reaching back and understanding what's happened, you know, we're, we're buoyed in our flight forward. So that's the symbolism of the Sankofa bird, which you'll learn more about watching the movie. <laughs> Anyone else wanna share a, a reflection and intention? No, no pressure to do so. Uh, and feel free if you do. So I invite you to continue to uh, bask with the coal trains as you continue to cultivate intentions. Uh, Ayo mentioned the Love Supreme, which is John Coltrane's, one of his masterpieces. He has many, but that's one of his. And, 
you know, music can be uh, a resource for our active contemplative practice to kind of waking up type contemplative practice. So if you're finding it vague um, for you, that that might help you as you try to write down or just spiritually, mentally, and emotionally surface intentions and actions that can keep you connected to the Black lives that you are inherently interdependent with and bodies who by resourcing, you resource your very own life as well. We resource our own lives as well. I see Jessica uh, dropping in the Common Ground programming, but that's certainly an yeah. resource. Can I, can I, before you take us into our musical exit, uh, just Jessica dropped in the chat the link to the Common Ground Meditation Center website uh, as an invitation to support Dr. Mashi's livelihood, just as the teachers before all of us have been supported by Sangha to offer their teachings, we are able to be here. And so that Dr. Majid, Ayo, and other wise teachers may continue to uh, help us on this path to awakening. We support the teachers that are before us. Any offerings, two thirds go to Dr. Majid. Common Ground retains one third for operations. And uh, we hope to Hi, have I'm cool many, I'm cool. many of these teachers back. That's all right, go ahead. I'm, we have no control over the YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Take us out, Dr. Meshi. I have deep longing to protect people from the suffering of ads. So <laughs> I'm always just muting myself while ads are playing if I'm doing music. But yeah, just by way of partnering. Uh, and you know, knowing that we do not part, right? And noticing what connects us, that absolutely what connects us is um, a love supreme. So with deep vows and deep gratitude, I will let you uh, release you on the wings of John Coltrane's A Love Supreme. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rajid. Thank you all. It's really been a, an honor to be with you for this culminating time. Deep gratitude to all of you and energy and vitality for what comes next. <laughs>